Hey you guys, welcome back to another Sunday series. Um, changing things up a bit today. So if you follow me on Instagram stories, you know that yesterday I went to the Target drop of their designer collaboration relaunch. Um, they pulled 20 of their most famous collabs out of archive, re-released all of that merchandise. It was men's, women's, kids, and home. So I wanted to walk you through what I got from the re-release but I also want to take you on a trip down memory lane and let's go over everything that I have collected from Target designer collaborations throughout the years. So let's get started. Um, first, I want to start with kids. Now that I have a daughter, this is a huge um, source of joy for me to be able to pick up little girl clothes. And they had some really cute items from the Harajuku mini line. Um, obviously that's Gwen Stefani's line. So. I'm not sure what I'm keeping yet. I'm kind of gonna have my daughter try things on. I'm gonna try things on and there's definitely gonna be some returning because I did get a decent amount of stuff. So let's start with the kids. So first thing is this little mini skirt. Um, I'm not gonna lie, pink frilly is not really my thing, but the leopard print or the cheetah print I thought was super in and on trend. So I kind of just had to get it. It was too cute to pass up. Another thing that I got, this dress, which she's not going to fit into for a while, but it was just so cute. Um, it's also a Harajuku mini, but it kind of reminded me of something like Alexander McQueen or Preen line, um, just with the plaid. It has kind of like a tartan, interesting kind of vibe to it, so I thought this was super cute. And then finally, this little hoodie. Um, I thought that the ears were super cute. She actually needs a new hoodie anyway, so this was a really good purchase. All right, moving on to accessories. Um, this is a designer collaboration that Target did that I actually never shopped um, when it was originally released. Wasn't on my radar. Um, it's Hunter. It's not a brand that I normally wear. I think that if I lived in a climate that actually had weather, I would be all about their boots because they are amazing. Um, but I went ahead and I picked up this belt bag. I just thought the color was great. I love the orange pop and then the contrasting white zipper. Now that I am a mom and the fact that this is like totally waterproof and cleanable fabric, this was very appealing. Um, it was 20 bucks and I thought, hey, why not? So this is the only accessory I got. This I'm super excited about. This throw blanket is actually reversible. So the inside um, is white instead of the black. And it's uh, the Mary Mecca line. I think this is just really chic. I love the geometric shapes. This is gonna go great in my house. I have a lot of whites and grays and blues. So I think this is gonna look really nice. Okay. The thing that I'm actually most excited about from this re-release is actually the book. Um, I don't believe they actually sold this online. I only saw it in the store, but um, Target partnered with Rizzoli Publishing House and they re-released this hardcover coffee table book and it's all of their design collaborations throughout the years. So for me, I will probably end up returning the majority of the stuff that I bought and just keep this because this is the visual archive. This is something that, you know, I will have forever. I'm huge on coffee table books. Oh, look at this Takoon one, I love it. Um, so this is just really cool for me. Like I geek out on this stuff. I love looking at old magazines and old ad campaigns. So this is like the best of both worlds. So highly recommend this book. It was my favorite piece from the relaunch if you uh, still can get your hands on it. Okay, I just realized I did forget a couple of pieces that I bought in this relaunch, so let's go through those. So first, speaking of um, Takoon, I did not buy this collection when it originally launched. Um, I honestly don't know why. I'm a huge fan of Takoon. I think that I probably was maybe burnt out on designer collaborations. Um, I think at the time when his collection launched, 
there was like the H&M ones that were coming out and Lon Vaughn did one, Margella did one, and it was just kind of the height of so many happening at once. I think that maybe there was too much noise and I turned uh, tuned it out, but I do love this print. I love that it's cotton and you can wash it. Um, I also picked up the shirt dress. I'm not sure which one of these I'm going to keep. I will not be keeping them both, but I like that I have options because they're both super cute. Um, let's see what else. I picked this up for my friend Jenna. Um, it's Isaac Mizrahi. The fabric is actually amazing. It's really high quality, and this is like not my color palette. It's totally hers. She's gonna rock it, but I thought this was super cute. A lot of people had this styled kind of like tied um, around the waist, and I thought that was really cute. Okay, memory lane time. Um, so I am super into designer anything and history, and so I wanna give you like a few little tidbits. So the first designer collaboration that basically ever went on record anywhere was actually Halston, and he partnered with JC Penney. And the whole point of doing so was this was during the height of his career. Every woman was you know, wearing his dresses. He was super, super big. And women could not get their hands on his stuff. Not only were a lot of women priced out, but it was so competitive that things were selling out before they even hit the sales floor because people had relationships with sales associates and it would just be completely gone before it even got released. So he decided to work with JCPenney and create a line to kind of bring his designs more to the masses. And that's basically what kicked off this entire thing that we're dealing with decades and decades and decades later. So um, I kind of want to start um, with this. I don't know if you guys remember when Target partnered with Neiman Marcus. It was during the holidays and they basically got several designers who each created like, I think it was just one item for this Neiman Marcus launch. Um, this is going to go down in Target history as the biggest flop out of all of their collaborations. Um, I am baffled about that to this day. I think it was one of the best ones that they ever did. I collected so many pieces from that particular drop. Um, if you remember, it was available in Target stores as well as in Neiman Marcus stores. And the kind of fabulous thing about this drop is I remember Clearly, like the normal Neiman Marcus customer could have cared less about this. So if you actually went into a Neiman Marcus, they had tons and tons of inventory, sizing, it was great. Um, this particular one is this Gase Taylor like faux fur vest with the sleeves. I actually wear this um, when I'm Catwoman for Halloween, so it has like a dual purpose. I love anything that can be turned into a Halloween costume. Um, I also got these leather gloves as part of that launch. I have worn these so much, you guys. I wear these um, during New York Fashion Week all the time. These are Brian Atwood. Um, they are real leather. They're lined. So, so chic. Love them. Another one. This is also probably one of my most worn pieces from that Neiman Marcus drop. This is Layla Rose. Um, it has like this little belt that comes with it. I actually usually put my own belt with it or just wear it solo when I do wear it. It has um, a drop hem in the back, so there's a little bit of a train. But I just love this watercolor print. I think it's so pretty. The silhouette is super flattering. Um, I have a very vivid memory of buying this dress. I remember being in Target and a woman was like, oh my gosh, that's so beautiful, but it's way, way, way too expensive. And I think that they priced this at $100, which for a Target drop is definitely over the amount that you think people would feel comfortable with. But within two weeks, every single piece from this drop was I think more than 60% off. So I ended up being able to price adjust this. I think I spent $30 on this, you guys. It's kind of nuts. It's probably the best $30 I've ever spent. Still wear this dress to this day. Okay. One of the drops in the re-release was Miss Sony. I was super looking forward to it. Um, at the time, I remember when it originally released, I had to work. 
I didn't get anything. I ended up buying some kids items, which I tried to wear myself, totally did not fit me. But I did get two things, actually four things from the drop. Um, I'm just realizing now two of them I forgot to pull out. But I got the tights. They did the, their like little knitwear tights. And I got two pairs of socks and it had the Missoni um, signature print. I honestly didn't like the colors that they chose for the prints on their clothes. I thought it was a little too dowdy. Um, so yeah, that's all I got from Missoni when it originally released. If you follow my stories, you know that I posted a backstage runway image of Gemma Ward wearing this um, top. Hers was actually the original. Um, this is Proenza Schooler. It, they basically revolutionized this kind of like bustier type of top. Um, I cannot tell you how many bars I wore this to in my early 20s with true religion jeans. Um, this was kind of like the cat's meow at the time. I'll never get rid of this. I clearly don't wear it anymore, but I adore it. Moving on to Philip Lim. Um, I really loved this one because, as you know, I love comic books and anything related to comic books. And the boom scarf and the sweatshirt that he did I thought were amazing. I only purchased the scarf, but I did also purchase his cable knit sweater. It has the little jewel encrusted neckline, with, which I think is so sweet. Um, this is part of the re-release, but I got this originally when it launched however many years ago. Here's another oldie but goodie. Um, this is the Rodarte dress. They re-released this in all colors. Um, I will be honest, I have never worn this, so it has been sitting in my closet for however many years. Um, now, I do think that I would pair this with a leather jacket and combat boots because the look is totally back. But um, yeah, basically, unfortunately, it did sit in my closet and I have not worn it very much. I don't know if you guys remember um, Patrick Robinson, but this was kind of an underground one. I think that unless you knew who he was as a designer, you probably weren't shopping this one. This is just a little shirt dress. Um, it has snaps. I actually wear this as a pool cover up all the time. I cuff the sleeves um, and still wear it. And this is probably, oh my gosh, 20 years old, maybe 15. I don't know. Okay. Master of Prints, Peter Pilato. I love, love, love this because this is my color palette. It's black and white. It's got the neon green accent. I still wear the skirt to this day. Um, this was like a skirt that I could still wear when I was pregnant and like kind of showing. Um, the slit in the side made it really forgiving and I was able to not like button it in the back. So this actually saved me in my pregnancy looking still chic when I had events to go to, but I wasn't quite telling people that I was pregnant yet. This was probably one of my favorite ones of the last, maybe ever. Um, I got a lot of stuff from this one. This shirt dress is so cute. I still wear it to this day. This sweatshirt, every time I wear it, people compliment it, men and women. And then I got her gingham print pants and the matching peplum top. Um, unfortunately, the top was a little bit too big for me and I had it tailored and the way that it ended up turning out was not good, so I did donate it to Goodwill, so I don't have that anymore, but I do still have the pants and wear them because they are super cute. Um, don't wear them as much during fall, winter, obviously, but they're a great spring, summer pant. What else? Erin Featherston. Um, this was like when 90s style came back the first time, <laughs> so she had these baby doll dresses with these Peter Pan collars, which is actually very 60s as well, but she kind of tough, uh, made it a little edgier with like combat boots and leather jackets and kind of roughed it up to make it a little bit more 90s inspired. Um, it, oh, I thought it had pockets. It does not have pockets, but this is another old, old, old one. 
know if you guys remember the Go International line. This was something when Target basically had kind of burned out of their designer collabs and they took a bit of a break. I think it was right after the Alexander McQueen one launched and they came out with this Go International line. Um, I have no idea who actually designed this. I've clearly never worn this. I remember the reason why I bought this was because I think at the time it was when that ridiculous song, I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world was out and I was gonna be her for Halloween and I thought this would be the perfect dress. Clearly never wore it. Oh yeah, and I forgot this. This is um, Anna Sui. This is part of the re-release. This is probably the one piece that I'm going to keep clothing wise out of the new drop. Reason being, it looks like vintage Patagonia, which if you followed me for a little bit, you know I adore Patagonia as a brand. So this is just super retro and I love it. All right, that's it. Um, I'm so curious to hear what collabs you loved from Des Target's designer collaborations over the years. Um, I do remember um, a designer that I actually gave the jacket away, but I used to wear it a ton when I had a corporate job. Um, it was Benaz Sarafpour, and it was basically like this cropped little black jacket and it had this, these lovely buttons and like a mandarin collar. It was three quarter length sleeved. Does anybody remember her collaboration? Um, you have to Google it if you don't. I just, I don't know, I love this. I love the fact that this is a way for people to have something that not only is like a collector's item, but it's also just, you know, a little bit of luxury at an affordable price in your own closet. So I hope that this makes a comeback. Um, I used to follow all of the Banana Republic designer collaborations, all of the H&M designer collaborations. I have so many pieces that I've collected throughout the years. Um, so yeah, I'd love for you guys to DM me your favorites because this is something I could talk about forever. Thank you for listening to that very long spiel of all of my collector's items throughout the years. Have a great start to the week.